Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today's video is very special. It's a two-part video. We're going to do one part today, next part tomorrow. Today's part is looking at crushing the Bitcoin bull market. Now, this stemmed from the recent videos on understanding altcoins against their Bitcoin value and our risk reward in a very volatile space of cryptocurrencies. So I think this part is going to be the important part to understand where the mindset is coming from when we look at the next video. So without further ado, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icons down below, and comment your thoughts down below. That helps out a lot, uh, especially with helping other people in the space as well. All right, let's dive in. A little background to the videos coming up. Today's video, crushing the next Bitcoin bull market. I'm going to look at bullishness, bearishness, and how I've developed my own thoughts and my own plans leading into the market. And when I get very bullish and when I just like to taper off and get a little more fearful of the market. Now, as I said, this stemmed from the video that will be coming out after this around bleeding altcoins versus Bitcoin. How do you understand that? What does this mean? We need to understand when bullishness comes in and when bearishness comes in, or at least I need to pr present my thoughts and my opinions around those two to hopefully clear up the mindset and what I'm seeing on the charts with the actual data. Next up, bullish. This is my thoughts. Bullish on BTC, bearish on alts BTC, bullish on alt USD. Comes down to what do you value more? Do you value BTC or USD? I'll also get into this in more detail in tomorrow's video, but this is important to note when it comes to the bullishness and the bearishness to get our timing right and developing my thoughts on the winning investor attitude. So the dumb money trades on emotion. Today's alts are going up. You were wrong. This didn't age well, referring to one days of data. First, differentiate the bull, bullish to the bearish attitude of an investor. So this is just some examples of what I see. And I want to get back to how to crush the next bull market. Of course, this is all my own opinion, not financial advice. And if you have different views, great. Let us know in the comments down below. I'm not having a go at anyone. It's just a matter of how I see things and how I put them into action in order to make sure I get some return at the end of each cycle in cryptocurrency. So the differentiation here is between the bullish and the bearishness of uh, the investors. Now, I'll just take a look back and it reminded me very much of a book called Market Wizards. If you've never read this, it's a fantastic book. I know a lot of people who have read, have read this when you first start out in trading. Now, in terms of how things are in 2021, these sort of books have gone by the wayside, I think. I suggest having a look at this. Reason being is it has some of the best fundamental traders and technical traders. So both, both work. It just depends on what works in your own mind. If you're more of technical with charts, then lean towards that. If you're more of fundamentals and you can't make heads or tails of a chart, then don't look at charts in that regard. And then there's going to be a variable between the two. But this book helps show uh, the difference between a legendary investors in terms of their fundamentals or their technicals. Some of these traders in this book say technicals are rubbish, absolute waste of time. And they did not see any use in them. Some TA guys like Paul Tudor Jones, uh, I don't know if he specifically said it, but there are several TA guys in the book, in Market Wizards, that said fundamentals, absolute waste of time. All we need is the charts. And then there are guys in the middle who like a bit of both. And so that's what I've got here. Legendary traders. We know Ray Dalio, Warren Buffett. Of course, they have billions. Paul Tudor Jones, billions. TA, he was the he called the 87 top. It was trading very, very closely to the market, making huge bank in the 1980s. Ed Seikoda, also a trader, huge on TA and develop plans to turn small amounts into massive, massive money. So the book, if you're looking for it, is this one here, Market Wiz Wizards, Jack Schwager, fantastic, uh, fantastically written. Ed Seikoda, Richard Dennis is also in the book. This is Ed here, just to give you a background. Ed developed one of the first commercialized trading systems for money, managing money in the futures markets. He's known for his end-of-day computerized trading system that relied heavily on trends. What makes Ed especially unique in his con, uh, continual self-examination and commitment to studying the psychology components of trading while also helping other traders achieve their potential. Everything he does is based on strict trading rules. He's outlined for himself, strict trading rules. It's how he manages to stay calm even when things aren't going his way. It's not every day you, you see someone lose 100 million and it's not and not even bat an eyelid. But then again, the remaining 4.2 billion probably does, does make it better. 
this is just uh, shows the different guys who are in the world of trading and investing and how they look at the markets. Richard Dennis, also in the book, borrowed $1,600, reportedly made $350 million in about six weeks. So we're not talking about random people on the internet like myself. This is what I've learned from books like Market Wizards to develop a winning attitude. And so I'm just suggesting that you read the book for yourself and uh, hopefully grow from the experience. Paul Tudor Jones, massive, massive in the TA, also has been buying some Bitcoin, net worth currently $7 billion as of 2021. Now to Bitcoin people that we have heard about. You guys may have never heard about the other traders there, but they have a ton more money than Michael Saylor has. Michael Saylor is at $2 billion. But it's not about the money, it's about how you get there. And Michael Saylor doesn't look at charts at all. He's just solidly into fun fundamentals. Ray Dalio, a mix of both, talks about Bitcoin net worth, $20.3 billion as of 2021. He's a TA and an FA, so technical analyst and fundamental analyst. He loves researching history. He has been very, very wrong in the past. In the 1980s, was thinking the market was extremely bearish in the early 1980s. He explains that and the market went the opposite direction, went very, very strongly into the bullish direction and learnt from that experience. So back to the bullishness and bearishness in our mindsets, how to develop that winning attitude of an investor, stuff that I've learnt from that book. And you can research it for yourself online. You don't need to buy the book. You can do this straight away. Just see how winning investors and traders plan themselves out. They know that there are no guarantees in the market. The market is always right. They know they can be wrong and they must change their minds quickly. This is often demonized by the average, the new investor online. Not all new investors, but there are a lot of new people who say, you'll change your mind one day, change it to the next. There is a difference where you have to go with your thoughts for a period of time and then figure out that maybe you were wrong and change. But it is demonized by many people that you can't change your mind or you are not allowed to have different thoughts. So they know they can be wrong and they must change quickly. Just as I mentioned as Ray Dalio got 1982 very, very wrong and had to change his thoughts and uh, keep going with the market. They have their own plan, which caters for all situations. This is something that I've seen many times that new people don't have a plan that caters for all situations. They want to reduce their risk, reduce their risk, reduce their risk, and then let their profits run as well. Does any of this sound bullish to you in terms of developing that mindset? They're not. To me, it doesn't sound bullish at all. There's no guarantees. That sounds scary. When someone else is always right, the market, that sounds scary. As a new investor, this is why I'm remembering from when I first started, uh, know that you can always be wrong and the market's always going to slap you in the face. That's not very bullish. I've got to have my own plan. Shit, I can't talk to someone else and follow what they're doing. I've got to reduce my risk. Risk sounds like a scary word. And then you have to let your profits run. So as you see this market start to climb, you have to not stop them short because you could have a few losses that you need to make up for and then also make those profits. And so to me, this is what in, I know this is what experienced investors do. None of this sounds very bullish in my mindset. And I think that comes across in the language as well. Now, as a comparison to new investors, generally only buy first without further thought. Unsure of what financial advice constitutes, not financial advice. They assume their position is the same as everyone else. And so when asking about questions, kind of like, well, why don't you just tell me the answer? It's like nothing is the same for everyone. Everyone's in a very, very different position. And the market is going to tell us what the market wants to do. They generally have no plan to sell for profit, sell for a loss, or sell to recover capital. And this is uh, very well seen when it comes to the losses. You can see the questions come through as, what should I do? I'm down 40%. Increasing risk, increase risk, increase risk. This is just looking at the market as it climbs up, you get more and more confident and start to put more money in. That's the risk. You keep increasing your risk, it gets worse. The same thing can be on the downside by catching the falling knife. And that's increasing the risk, increasing the risk, increasing the risk. And so I just say here, be honest. Does this sound like something you've done or currently still do? And I definitely know I did all of the above in 2017, in the 2017 crypto bull market. I increased my risk at the top. I increased my risk on the way down. I didn't have a set plan to sell for a profit. You know, I've got to make something up. I didn't have a set plan to sell for a loss. I didn't do too bad, but I didn't have any set plan. And then I didn't sell to recover my capital. And that is a big killer in the long scheme of things. Not financial advice. I remember asking a friend time and time again, about what's going on. This thing has crashed. What should I do? 
uh, just because I didn't have a plan. I was just following what he did. And his way of trading was completely different to the way I am. I'm more conservative. He was a, I guess I could say a professional gambler in the ICO space because he had a plan and he stuck to it and multiplied the money very, very quickly. Generally, buy first without further thought. It's just get into the market, you're going to miss out. And so that's where the FOMO and the fear, the greed, all that sort of stuff comes into play. Now, part of my plan is to have an idea of where I see the market in the short term, medium and long term. And then I also look at it against BTC and USD because both are important to me, but I obviously want to stack more Bitcoin. This is going to be different for everyone. So to get a recap of where I see the market, short term, long term, long term, I look at it in terms of months, maybe years, maybe many, many, many weeks, very bullish, BTC and alts. Short term, days to weeks, I'm feeling a bit neutral to bullish on Bitcoin. Bullish in the short term, neutral, I think we're going to come back and test some other prices in the $30,000 area. Short term, days to weeks, this is for altcoins, I'm neutral to bearish because I see altcoins dropping in their BTC value, not necessarily their USD value, and that's what we're going to cover in the next video and why I wanted to go through the understanding the mindset between the bullish and the bearishness and then also having that plan as well. And so the natural comment that comes up is, I'm so bearish. After reading and seeing the way I view the market in terms of what I've learned about experienced investors, very successful investors, I see this as a natural way to learn to survive in the markets and then let those profits run so that we can make the money back, take some profits and then put that back into the market when no one else is looking at the market. So I was extremely bullish in early to mid 2020 when others were fearful. I have this on my YouTube channel. There are several videos of me in April, May and June talking about Bitcoin, 100, 200 views on a video. Maybe the thumbnail sucked, maybe the title sucked. But when I talked about stocks, everyone was keen. Everyone was super keen. This is the difference. I was so bullish then that that's when I'm buying. No one else is talking about it. Now, now everyone else is talking about it. I get fearful on the pumps. I want to start to sell out of some because I know other people aren't seeing that. They didn't run through all of the emotions of 2020 and 2019 and 2018. That's all instilled in me as an investor. That's when I'm bullish. Now we get to this tops. All right, you can have it. You can have your your bullishness into the highs with less returns. That's okay. I want to get back in at lower prices, which is what I like now in Bitcoin in the 30,000s, which is why I am bullish on Bitcoin now. Now, in terms of deciphering between the content online, which you know can get very noisy and confusing, this is part of the, the mindset now. From my experience, people are constantly bullish, bullish sources, bullish on everything. They want everything to remain bullish and they're just not sure of what's happening next. I don't see this as them being in the game of investing. It's digital online marketing. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with being bullish, staying in the game. It's uh, it's a very important part of the ecosystem. So they have an important role to play, which is to bring in new investors and to keep them in the space, keep them entertained. Because as new people, you don't want to flick onto a video that's a picture of a chart and learn how to read charts or understand the news and put a plan together. So my point here is that I don't treat the content the same. One is for entertainment and the other is for education. Technical analysis, fundamental economic info is different to news opinions and fun entertainment content. And I want both. I want entertainment and education because I can't listen to education all day long, but I don't want to just be entertained all day long. I want to put something into practice. Now to putting it into practice and working on that investor mindset to be crypto rich through this next stage of the Bitcoin bull market, obviously my opinion, define your goal for your money. This is your money. No one else is going to look after it as best as you do. Don't just do anything that someone says online. Make a plan, up to you. I suggest looking at making a plan, go and get some ideas together and see how it feels and works for you. And then you create it as your own. Uh, so choose which info you need and want for your plan. Making, make it a feeling and measurable. So that's the art with the science. The art is the feeling. The science is making it measurable. If you don't have the feeling, it's going to be very hard to do. And if you don't make it measurable, it's just going to be all fluffy and airy. So write down your goals. My goal is to achieve whatever it is, how, when, why, where, who, all of those things, and then get into more detail with that. And then if you can consistently work on that plan, 
That's where we go back to developing the winning investor attitude. It's because they all have a plan. Like we looked at with Ed Seikoda here, $4 billion, turning those small amounts of money into some massive riches. Very strict plan with rules, implemented daily. That's where he's getting that winning investor attitude to turn tiny amounts of money into massive amounts to crush the next Bitcoin bull market. So I hope that explained the way I look at the markets, how I have developed as an investor. If you did find some value from it, make sure you stick around on the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We got the bleeding altcoins versus Bitcoin video coming out after this as well. And I'll make reference back to this video in particular so that I don't have to go through all of the bearish bullish mindset and what is most important to me as well. Follow me on Instagram, daily Q and A's over there. Also on Twitter for crypto news update. If you want to learn more about becoming a winning investor in the crypto space, join us on the Investor Accelerator. Link to that is down below. Newsletter is full of crypto stocks and property information, completely free. It comes out once every two weeks. Make sure you drop your email address for that down below. I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.